Hi, Sarah. Hi, Barbara. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, just adjusting to some of the new normals. So, but it's good. Yes. Good. Well, it has been such a long time since I saw you. The last time I saw you was after you shot the show Significant Other, which was in February. And so that's been about five months ago. And prior to that, we've seen each other every couple of months because you have shot every production we have done going back at least 10 years, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I remember meeting you the very first time I met you. I was shooting a story for the Minnesota Women's Press. And I don't remember how long ago it was, but you said something like, do you ever shoot theater? And I was like, yeah, I shoot everything. So, um, yeah, and then, and then it was just ever since then. And I just, I really love, like, that we do all these shows together, that I see all the great shows that, that the Jewish Theater Company is doing, and that I get to hang out with you and look at pictures for hours after the shows and stuff. It, it, yes, it has become a, a very fun ritual for me. You shoot the opening weekend Sunday night, so you shoot that show that's from about seven to nine. We gather the stuff and go somewhere where we can sit till about 11 o'clock at night. Yep. That's always fun. Yeah. We had to so, pick a place that was going to be open late enough. That was the biggest thing. What's open late on Sundays? What can we find? Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, um, I know that you have been a photographer for a very long time. And I'm wondering when you first knew you wanted to be a photographer. Um, well, those, you know, that's sort of a gradual question. I first, uh, the first picture I ever remember really taking with a, you know, fancier camera was with my dad's camera when we all went, my family all went to the Lincoln Memorial. I think it was in third grade or something. And I just, I remembered that picture for years and I just thought it was such a great photograph. And, and it was like, as soon as I get old enough, I'm going to be on the, you know, the yearbook staff as a photographer. And, uh, you know, and then I looked at the picture years later and it's, you know, it's just a picture of a family <laughs> on these steps, but it meant a lot to me. And then when I got into college, I was still trying to figure out what my path was. And I was always taking a photography class for fun, along with all these other things that I was exploring. And it just kept drawing me back and drawing me back. And I thought, well, um, I, you know, I need to make a conscious choice. If this is what I want to do, then I need to throw myself into it because it's going to be hard. And so that's what I did. Now, um, you went to, you grew up in Michigan, mm -hmm. right? And you went to the University of Michigan? I went to University of Michigan for my undergrad, and then I went um, back to school for my master's at Savannah College of Art and Design in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And that was in photography? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do they do in a master's program with photography? Well, um, I will say that a lot of a lot of MFAs are geared towards teaching, um, even if that isn't your goal. Like I wasn't necessarily I did end up teaching photography for many years at a college, but that wasn't my goal at the time. My goal at the time was just to be better and learn more and um, you know grow. And so really, it, it's a lot about finding your own voice. How do you take the history of photography and, you know, all of its many facets and then through that, develop your own style. And so, you know, working on a signature voice was a big piece as well. Well, you, you photograph many different I don't, I don't know if the word genre is right, but many different things. You do theater productions, you do portraits, you do um, architectural shoots. Am I, am I on track here? Yeah, 
yep, I shoot, I've shot a lot of artwork. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that for me, it was always about, again, this concept of growth. Um, you know, I don't ever want to feel like I'm stagnating. And at any time I, you know, flex that photographic muscle and try something new, it's going to inform different ways that I photograph. So um, I don't say no an awful lot to a new opportunity, but I do know what my strengths are. And I think that my strength is people. Um, I, I love, I love the gestural quality of the human form. Um, I love how much a moment can change just in the blink of an eye, right? And so you have this, this laugh or this, you know, this one just tiny thing that changes in the frame and it changes the entire photograph. And, and that, that doesn't happen so quickly with some other things. Um, architectural photography is about light and how light can fall on a still object. Um, and, and nature is a lot about light. Nature requires a lot more patience than I have because you have to just sit in a bog for hours until like the light is perfect and the animals do their thing. But with people, you know, when you can kind of work with them and um, be there in that space with them, um, you know, there's just, there's so many interesting th things that can happen. And as you know, Barbara, I photograph, I take way too many frames. Like, <laughs> I shoot a lot. <laughs> That's why our nights take so long, because I'm just, I, I you know, I, yeah. I take You're a little lot. demon with your <laughs> camera. When we look through photos, I think when you shoot a show, there must be 500. Yeah, there's more. Yeah. Yeah. More. I'd, say, I'd say our average is about 700 per show. Really? Yeah. No wonder I go home tired. It's not just the wine. <laughs> it's not just the wine. <laughs> it's going through all the photos. But they're wonderful because you capture so many different moments in time, you know, like an audience watching the show can just be engrossed in it and in the same 15 or 30 seconds you've captured 10 moments right because you're just shooting 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 to capture just the, the essence of what's going on at that time in the play yeah um, one of the things that's interesting to me about photography um, two is that like, these are all slices, like all of those 700 frames, they're each this slice, right? And then you have this opportunity to just sit with that moment and just examine it and see all the different things that you can see. Life moves so fast. Um, I think that's why a lot of photographers that I know, um, you know, they might end up transitioning into uh, video um, and, you know, I'm, I, I keep that door open, but I just, I love stopping and looking at this one slice, this one moment and seeing all the things that are going on that you can't ever see all of them at once when you're there, you know, they might be in your periphery, but you don't see them all. Right, right. Um, you, you mentioned that you so like shooting people. And I know recently you did um, a project where you were shooting um, homeless people. And you, you talked about how much you enjoyed that. And I'm wondering, how did you make the people feel comfortable? Um, because they let you into their world. Right. Well, that project was um, in collaboration with a nonprofit organization that's um, working to, uh, you know, support the dignity that is inherent in everyone and, um, and to give back the voice um, to people who are suffering um, from homelessness. 
And for me, I mean, I'm going to be honest, pretty much everybody in front of my camera, I developed this weird little crush on for a while. Like I just, I love them. I love them. I love the people in, in front of my lens. And, um, you know, it wasn't always that way. There was a period that I, everything was ironic, but at this point in my life, I just, you know, I, 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 I fall in love with the people that are in front of my camera. Um, and I want to show that, like, I want to show that inherent beauty that exists in people. And so I try to dignify that also with light and form and, you know, uh, and, and I try to bring that out. I mean, we joke, we talk, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a collaboration. Any photograph is a collaboration between me and my subject. Um, and with that in mind, that I can't take the picture without you, right? Um, that you're an essential part. That I just I just hold that and keep that as I as I photograph them. Is that project available for people to see? The general yeah. public. It's, it, it was not a big project. It was literally like a two day shoot um, that I did. I guess that, that was last year. Um, so I didn't necessarily, I was just volunteering for the, you know, and honestly, I, I'm blanking on the name of the organization right now, but I was just volunteering for that organization. Um, it was something that, you know, again, kind of hearkening back to the concept of humanity they felt like i would love to see it i think people would be interested in it well maybe we can i i can maybe find it and we can put a link on you know this video or something maybe and oh and, sure yeah yeah that'd let's be great that. let's do that okay i know that you've also shot famous people um, my recollection is that before i met you at some point in your life you lived out in LA it, and what, what were you doing then? Um, I was photographing for a company called Berliner Studio. Um, we photographed a lot of events and, um, you know, different red carpet things. We were not paparazzi. Um, we were always hired to be there. So for example, I was hired to photograph um, Dustin Hoffman's son's bar mitzvah. Um, so I spent the weekend with his family. Um, Friday night was a dinner with all of his out of, with all of the out of town relatives. Um, Saturday was the bar mitzvah during the day. And then at night they had rented out a club, um, you know, just as a celebration space. And then Sunday was, um, another gathering, um, of more, mostly family at his home. Um, for a brunch, right? For, a brunch. Yeah, for a brunch. And Jerry, uh, that whole sequence is familiar to me from East Coast events, bar mitzvahs. Right. Bar mitzvahs. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it was, it was definitely fun to spend that much time. Um, a lot of the events out there were more just, you know, single day or even just a few hours. Um, and so just spending more time and seeing the relationship of um, Mr. Hoffman and his wife um, was really nice. Although I shot too many frames, I found out later they were disappointed with, <laughs> with the cost of the amount of film that I shot because that was back in the days of film. But um, but yeah, and I also find it really funny that uh, when I now tell that story to say like 24 year olds, they have no idea who Dustin Hoffman is anymore. <laughs> so I have dated myself. <laughs> Do you have any um, memories of something from a shoot that was funny or interesting or any, any special memory? There's a lot of them. I mean, 
and and they kind of come in in these different forms like some of the memories are more about who i shot so for example you know i photographed the dalai lama but then years and years and years and years later i photographed his sister and i didn't know until right before the shoot that he even had a sister i mean who knew um and you know so it's it's kind of interesting to to you know discover those kinds of things. Um, I did a series maybe about five years ago of um, artists working in their studios um, and put out a book of those um, that's, uh, that was titled Open Studios. I did it with a Minnesota State Arts Board grant. And that was also a lot of fun because, you know, we, I was going into all these spaces and these were people as opposed to the Dalai Lama, which I just, you know, met briefly and I couldn't understand him, um, but he seemed very nice. Uh, uh, the, you know, in the studios, when I was photographing that, I, I did that project because I was in Northeast and I've had a relationship with these artists for a long time. So it was my opportunity to um, honor them and to hear their stories. And um, so, you know, that was a lot of fun. But then I photographed for the Minnesota Women's Press um, a lot. And, I, you know, I'm the managing editor there now as well. And um, every single issue, there's stories. Like I, I photographed this woman um, for the issue that's out right now, the climate and the cover. And, you know, she came, uh, she, she told me this great story about how she had spent the night in the woods the night before because her home was really near where a lot of the, the uh, protests and some rioting was happening and it was very loud. So she couldn't get a good night's sleep. So she decided to go camp in the woods for the night, you know, and then, and then, you know, she shows up at my shoot fresh as a daisy and she's like, I think I'm going to sleep there tonight too. And, and, <laughs> But she's doing this great work on climate change and um, just, you know, a wonderful individual. So, you know. It must be very, um, I don't know, for lack of a better word, educational. I mean, you, you must learn so much about life in the world from yeah. all of the photography you get to um, do. You know, it's, it's funny because it's, it is such an opportunity. I mean, I would have never been able to experience all those Minnesota Jewish theater company shows without having this access, you know, and, and being able to see them um, through you and be, you know, and through photographing the shows. Um, and then, you know, I, I never would have had access to all of these different stories. It's, it's sort of this strange free pass, but then there's always these weird limits. And some of them are very self-imposed and some of them are just feeling like, or, you know, not really having the right information to make the image. So for example, shortly after I moved to Minnesota, I was fascinated by ice houses. They're so weird, you know? Um, <laughs> you go to a lake and there's all these houses and you're like, what, what are they doing? I would have. I would agree. The first time I saw one, having moved here from New York, it was a, an odd sight. Yeah. So I decided I was going to go photograph them. And I, I packed up a large format camera, which, you know, if you've never used a large format camera, it, they're, they're bulky and massive and they need a lot of equipment. And, you know, and I just decided I was going to shoot this on film with this large format camera and I was going to go out on the ice and I drive I don't know how many hours out to this lake that, you know, I, I, that had first attracted my attention and I get out there and, you know, nobody was there. It was the wrong time of day. And I was like, I don't know enough about my subject to do a good job. I am not part of this culture. I am, I, I don't understand it. I didn't do my research and I can't make these pictures. And that happened to me again recently during the George Floyd protests and riots. Um, I didn't photograph during those. And part of it was that, you know, Northeast Minneapolis wasn't really hit. So I wasn't as directly touched by what was happening. I'm white. Um, and it didn't really feel like my story. It felt like 
somebody else's story. It, it felt like if I went in, I would be a voyeur and not, so I decided during that, that I would put down my camera and volunteer instead. Um, and I specifically chose to volunteer for black women led um, opportunities and um, let them lead and, you know, give me direction on what, what's needed in the community. And I think that's, sure. I think that's important to recognize is that like, you know, yes, you can photograph everything and anything. Um, but in some ways, all of those are a reflection of what your lens is, what, what you personally experience and what you know, and then how that comes through the lens. Um, you know, you can't just take that lightly. It matters. And right. So you mentioned that when you went out on the lake to shoot ice houses, you had this really massive camera. And I know cold. over time, say that again. It was so cold. <laughs> <laughs> I know over time, things have evolved and changed. And now people use digital cameras. Has your equipment changed that much? I mean, how do you shoot now? Right. Um, I shoot all digitally now. When the large format camera, I was shooting digitally at that point too, but I was also just working with um, other mediums as well because that was um, very important to me still at that point um, to keep working with film. Um, but yeah, I'm exclusively digital. You, you know, I don't necessarily shoot more frames now. Everybody talks about how it's just so easy to just, you can take as many pictures as you want. That doesn't really change. I just would pay the money for the film. Um, the editing after takes a significant amount longer. You're not just sort of done. You don't just kind of hand over, here's my picture, do with it, you know, because it's done. So things actually end up taking longer and are a little bit more expensive, but you have a lot of flexibility and you have a lot of instant feedback. You kind of can tell right away if something is working or if it's not, if you need to adjust um, and how. So I think there's, you know, there's pros and cons. I do miss the dark room. I used to, I used to just do all nighters in the dark room. I'd be there at three o'clock in the morning. My, and when I was an undergrad at University of Michigan, I, uh, a grad student gave me her key. Just, I don't know. She, she was just a very nice person and she gave me her key. And um, so I could go in at any time and, and it's, there's nothing more fun than, you know, just having your headphones on in the dark, in the middle of the night and watching these pictures kind of show up, you know, as they, as they move through the developer. But yeah, I don't know. It all changes and uh, you know, it's right. part, of, part of the learning and part of the growth. Well, it's great to have me have the opportunity to sit here and not only catch up with you, but to learn about photography, you know? When I'm with you at the theater, it seems so rushed and let's get looking at these pictures. <laughs> so this is really informative for me. So thank you for that. Yeah, I love talking about photography. I can talk about photography all day long. Okay, well, we'll have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to find a place on a Sunday evening that's open past 11. We'll get all the photos selected and then we'll talk about photography. Right, right, right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's plan on it. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Take care. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.